hello allow me to continue and then uh, go back a uh, little bit of uh, recapitulation on uh, this thing. So, if you look at my presentation, sir can I see the PPT? Yeah, if you look at my presentation you will see there uh, that uh, I had started it earlier saying all product design is a behave of activity and it is not a pigeon holing seeing two things pigeon holing is separately people deal with things and then the pigeons do not uh, intercommunicate the purpose is okay no problem in this case two things are there one of the first thing is that they have a common purpose I do not know what it is other than you know I do not steal honey I make others steal for me but then I do not take honey so it, it makes it even one is making food for its survival and uh, building this beautiful what you call a beehive in case there is some threat we have a stinger a stinger which is you know poised for uh, attack. So, if you are not a threat of course, there is no problem it is good same thing happens with electronic product design. So, we have here so many of these things the core of it is probably the small bit of actual product. So, going a little closer we will notice that uh, something which is equally important is probably all this stuff saying there is standards and there is a product management meaning the how do you introduce the product. People are not ready to buy your most advanced uh, product as you like. So, I have here a shameless copy a clone sorry for the words you see here the moment you look at it you do not need to whether I add this pointless color bar or not you know very well it does not make any sense at all. But then the original cost probably 70,000 rupees it is a lot of money this cost 7,000 rupees one tenth of it. So, I can keep losing them and uh, tracking them, but then you see that there is something to it now which wants people to copy. So, I will stop, I will now get back to my presentation. So, the product management or the, the people now who decide what is it that we want initially nobody would want a fully what do you call all the bells and whistles uh, product because the market is not ready and then uh, we do not even know whether somebody will buy it. So, I am sure manufacturers are working about it all the time people say planned obsolescence the issue is not about planned obsolescence the issue is how to introduce products to the market and thus people try a basic product it is unlikely that they would want to go to the fully loaded product. Very much related to this is something called industrial design. When people talk about industrial design what they mean is long ago once upon a time it was about products which are made in the industry. Right now definition is saying making technology humanizable and two things traditional product designers especially like me we are caught up in how to make a better product and the technology of it. But then user would not want that much of technology this RAMs, ROMs and you know MB, MP and uh, I do not know we are all strong with pixel, but we really do not know what is a voxel. So, we are not yet ready for it industrial design makes takes the user's point of view it, they say the whole issue is about experience design. So, I will stop here I suggest you go to the other things you now saying check up about it and then something which is very much related to today is the new manufacturability. So, I have shown you a clone phone which uh, the fact that they are able to sell at uh, 7 or 8 thousand rupees shows that 
probably it has made it half the cost. So, I expect uh, the whole thing is probably you know assembled and uh, it leaves the OEM premises for uh, much 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 less maybe around 50 dollars and then you pay what you call 1000 dollars for it is not my problem, but the issue is manufacturability has ensured two things that things are made within a target cost, you have a target cost and made in sufficiently large volumes and once the design is ready, it can be made by anybody anywhere. So, little you know hard to take, but the reality is like that is what is manufacturability about saying you should be able to make it anywhere in the world and then you know, sell it wherever you like and all that. Related to this, I mean I will, I will just uh, come and go back here something, three things are very much related to this, I will come back later. Now, when we come to the actual core uh, product, we will notice that the interconnection technology, thermal, environmental seem to make a lot of difference. So, latest is that this is related to manufacturability is computer aided manufacturing saying once you create certain files followed no, once you create a certain file that same file should be able to be used by the manufacturing people there. Then if you remember I had talked about CAD techniques, advanced is CFD and all sorts of numerical and what you call finite element analysis and you see here, oh I am trying to look in the monitor and do, we have now automatic test equipment. In fact, things are so standardized that PCBs are not checked in I know this thing, the components are uh, real and they are all checked, components are shot at a PCB. So, you have a component shooter which at a mad uh, at least for an old fellow like me who is suffering from various you know time uh, frame problems they are just shot at the PCB and miraculously they seem to stick to the PCB and something happens something else in the end an automatic test equipment no just make sure that it works and I understand they talk about a yield saying all the PCBs work all the time and not just then later on also. In case something fails we have maintainability you see there we have that maintainability how well things can be maintained both by authorized uh, service people or coming back to my clone phone, something beautiful has happened, you do not even need to go anywhere all the time, updates are available, even should you buy the original apple, it gets updated automatically, it needs your permission only as a formality and then otherwise no, I do not know if it is real or not, there is a kill switch also, if they want they can shut off the phone, but they will never do it that is I understand the kill switch or jailbreak and all that no are not part of this. So, we have these issues of CAD techniques ok, if you start properly you have several things and then you have computer manufacturing, automatic test equipment and maintainability and the moment you start with CAD techniques you just go up here we come to new type of controlling heat. So, it is all you know covered here saying in maintainability assembly installation mean time to repair and long term use, industrial design user satisfaction ergonomics aesthetics fitness and feature integration. So, when somebody buys a designer something including a designer watch, I have a funny looking designer watch, I am surprised because it does not cost too much, it is a Fitbit, it is one of the trackers, it is costly in India it is very costly, uh, the original uh, I do not know how much it is, like so many of the things you see with me are all presented, it costs 
15,000 rupees. But I am very much thrilled that it comes with a metal strap and even the other straps what I have and then if you see the metal strap also it has a magnet and then I am very much thrilled what I want is visible what I do not want miraculously goes away. That is what is about this integration of features and again coming back to product management. In the beginning we have to we have no choice but to have what is called an entry level. Not long ago maybe 50 years back we just had a car you lived with it forever. Well, I would not say the future is a shock anymore, the future is here right now people talk about an entry level car saying first time somebody first time buyer entry level and all that they talk about eventually they depending on where they use it. If they are using it you know off road or anything they will go into sports vehicles and depending on their thing you know you have commuter segment and so on. So, design tries to make a trade off between various things. So, so you have something which is at an entry level in India when we started cars were uh, having I do not know one stick on the side some of the time the stick was uh, you know stuck to the steering wheel and uh, then they had lot of pedals at the bottom you know push it here there and all that we have got used to those things. Now, these days I think it is unlikely anybody buys a car which does not have power steering assisted brakes, power windows, climatizer, SRS airbags, then uh, what do you call dash cam, uh, then you have parking sensors, you have uh, front everything and at least what we do not need or uh, I have never been able to use is the cruise control and GPS trackers and so on. No? This is how features are. Now, if somebody asks me I crawl at the thing I live in a place called Bangalore where on good days in bad traffic we cover 10 kilometers an hour. So, do not ask me what happens on bad days and what it is and then yes if you have been able to make it faster drive fast I cannot I live in. So, the thing is what the size of the engine should be that is how no things called hybrids, micro hybrids and how you store energy all this you no know, design takes care of these things. In manufacturability you come about fabrication the quality costs and finishing something should look good. Even things like a phone you do not look at all the features and order it online it is unlikely even if you are to order online the positioning in your mind is very very critical part of it is this finishing how well parts fit together something which looks good it gives you a measure of quality directly. Something again related to the various types of costs involved in making it things have been evolving and the other extreme no come here saying maintainability after installation how do you install things then uh, if you remember no I was talking about hot plug in. So, happens with power supplies happens with fans happens with uh, you know actually boards if you want reliability you end up with that and then after a failure how quickly can you repair something. The plumber needs to be on your premises before you get flooded out not a big flood like a cyclone a normal drip no eventually very irritating. We have the feeling that drips you know are made to make sure that uh, not the drips here, but the I think people call it a tap or a faucet, faucet dripping in fact Disney made a movie out of it and long term use backwards compatible. So, if somebody has a, what you call a old rotary dial phone the new devices must have the way of converting it into pulse dialing phones ok. So, I have an option between pulse dial and DTMF and the new technologies and then something related to his assembly and disassembly. So, I will not talk too much about it. Next slide 
talks about the environmental, the interconnection and the thermal aspects, okay, which have come nothing from the actually from the descent thing. See here we have thermal environmental interconnection little closer, this is the box we are talking about. This thermal very peculiarly comes to what looks like a intuitively contrary thing saying if you seal something you cannot cool it. If you want to cool it you have to make sure you make holes no you have a dotted line I will later on I will come to these things. This is what no early on I had shown you saying we have conductivity from here you see here the you know heat is being lost uh, just outside from the PCB itself and then something from the leads and then this blue color and then you see here something from the case. If you are to have a case which is reasonably conductive and then it has very good convection and maybe you know you can is there a way of doing it maybe we can do better. Exotic cooling techniques in include phase change, same thing what looks uh, you know very very see the previous slide shows as a idealized thing this is a heat pipe a practical heat pipe is a little more but I still I am not a much of a fan for it. Now you see whenever we talk about things like that all the time they cannot be in a benign uh, atmosphere. So you have uh, this is a weather station and uh, uh, something and then uh, this one is a I think you know what it is no right side is a what you call we have a hybrid uh, that rain um, what you call a device and these are all you know things in which I have worked. So, we have an antenna here I mean actually this is a reflector that is an antenna we have various devices all these things you know we end up with what was actually if you see this you know it looks like a you know what you can find inside a lab and then but you end up with using it outdoors. So, you have a temperature compensated pressure sensor here some of these things need to be maintained at a constant temperature. You understand the sensor itself now is expected to be maintained at a constant temperature. So, one of the common things while the earlier picture showed you something about uh, heat pipe this is directly taken from the catalog of this uh, Meerstetter uh, engineering. So, since it is uh, retrieved recently I suggest look for it you understand no Meerstetter engineering why is it is uh, because it is only well I, I have no interest I mean I am sorry I have no pecuniary interest in the whole thing I am very much interested that you know people understand and uh, instead of you are searching this thing I have read through I would like to tell you about it. First of all TEC controllers and Peltier elements. So, TEC subsequently it is explained you should see what it is. So, the contents are all estimated here. Thermoelectric cooling understand no thermoelectric cooling can be used for various applications even when active cooling below ambient temperature or high temperature position in combination and so on and so on is actively regulates the temperature of a given object or a case. You see this is where the criticality comes if you must ensure that precision of the order of fraction of a degree has to be maintained. It is very much possible for us to maintain it. If I showed you that pressure sensor which the earlier picture showed you obviously, it does not need it, but imagine crystals for transmitters they have given I mean very narrow 
what they call fre frequency band, you cannot afford to make it drift at all. So, the main crystal is maintained in a oven and uh, typical temperatures are around uh, 70 degrees, I think most uh, proportional control oven crystals work at around 70 degrees, but imagine inside the enclosure if the ambient goes above that. So, we have the thermoelectric controllers, thermoelectric cooling in combination with the Pelter element is actively regulating the temperature of a given object or case done without acoustic and electrical noise, vibrations and mechanical moving parts. All other thing you have seen including the heat pipe, it ends up with vibrations and acoustic noise. It may not be directly observable, but that bubbling is not a very comfortable thing. If you know that uh, here something is bubbling inside, you know what it is. So, it is not a your what you call a tummy growling, but uh, some mild noises. Changing from cooling to heating is possible by changing direction of current without making any mechanical changes. So, you must have heard of the air conditioners where which are reversible and can be used as heat pumps. I will say more in what you call they, they work occasionally. We do have a problem. You want a room inside to be heated when the temperature outside is very cold. Something which is outside the thing, the uh, outdoor unit has the problem of trying to exchange, uh, I will say cold, <laughs> trying to pull in heat from outside and passing it to inside. Because outside imagine if it is already condensing and uh, the temperatures are really low, not much can be done, differential and the absolute temperatures are limited. But in the case of Peltier, it looks like it is not so much of a problem, of course, alone very rarely they are used, they are always used in conjunction with other things. There are temperature limits when operating Peltier elements, elements are available with a maximum temperature of 20 degree where this limit is divided by the reflow temperature of solder and ceiling. Limit where the temperature will rise again and more current is supplied, this is because of the power dissipation within the element drawing more current than I max. So, we have all this uh, stuff you know heating and cooling and you know how much of what you call uh, cooling can actually be done because there is a heating inside the whole uh, this thing. So, you uh, not as if you know you, you can just it is not a linear thing like that tremendous amount of positive current you put and it keeps cooling down uh, not true. In this case you know maybe it is possible only for us to operate around the 0 because it is still in the linear region partially after you go down a little we still have a problem. Designing a thermoelectric application cooling is the critical part. We will take the case of cooling an object and his example for the design you see here. I will see if I can enlarge it. Ah, it does get enlarged. So, we have temperature sensor, observe what you call the object itself, and then you see here very, very important thing is. thermal isolation. I am sure some of you have checked on the videos on YouTube, they will show you you know a small show me my face sir, they will show you a small plate uh, which is typically around 30 or uh, you know 40 mm square and then you have uh, what you call a power supply pumping in current and then I put a few drops of water and show you how quickly it freezes. Reality is while that is ok, it is not a very efficient way of it. Instantaneously while the thing may work, there will always be a short circuiting from heat from the other side to this. To isolate it, we need to pack it into a proper thermal isolation which is given here. This thermal isolation is very, very critical to make sure that uh, there is no short circuiting from the both the sides and the 
you see this red and uh, you know what you call um, black. So, I expect that uh, I will put it as you know out uh, high and out minus they are red through colored wires and uh, you have a, a plate here and then uh, you know we have the monitoring something which monitors the sink temperature. So, usually you have a thermistor or uh, sometimes you know something else some other sensor and then two critical things what you need to do is to spread the heat you probably need a copper or aluminum plate to give it certain amount of stability. Then you have the actually you know the peltier element uh, then the whole thing afterwards you know uh, the different elements will be explained in the following chapters and very critical is you also have a fan there. So, depending on the criticality of the design total amount of heat load because heat load seems oh, heat loads is critical. Estimating the heat load of the object to be cold. So, part of it is make sure you minimize the heat load. So, no point in uh, what you call cooling the a large volume when the, the thing which needs to be cooled is a small volume. So, it is a very huge uh, what you call data center uh, place what is valid for the whole room and the whole thing it is also same valid in a small chip that needs a close control. Define temperature working range both the working ranges that is the ambient with which you exchange the heat as well as the device which needs to be maintained. Choose the element that satisfies the requirements easier said than done little bit of Last step, test your experiment set and prove it loop, loop until you get into a reasonably satisfactory thing. Choose a TEC controller with enough power, this seems to be also equally critical and then this since the manufacturer here tries to deal with the whole situation, he supplies what has been tested already you know experimental test up set I mean experimental uh, setup you no know, has been tested. So, in case it requires uh, let us say directly one big connector which connects to the whole system the Peltier and then the temperature sensor and so on and maybe something for the fan and then input and something very critical is to have a backup battery saying do you have a reasonably sufficient maybe a 12 volts uh, 20 ampere battery which are likely to find the moment all this stuff is there and then something to keep the battery running there would not be any runaway that accepts it. So, there do all this choose a TEC controller choose the object temperature sensor and the optional heat sink sensor you see very coolly has written optional. So, I expect that uh, it is probably required that you sense the idea is saying the final ultimate thing is the object temperature the device under control and if you know the heat sink sensor you can proactively design if you think design, choose a heat sink for the Peltier element which once again no comes to the heat load and the working range choose a fan to air the heat sink meaning do you to give convective uh, what do you call uh, improve the convective heat transfer coefficient again he has given optional depending on if you want it complicated you have a fan if you do not have a complicated arrangement maybe a simpler system by which you know a natural uh, thing will occur choose a power supply test your experimental setup.
An important parameter is the amount of heat to be absorbed from the surface of the TEM or Peltier element depending on the application there are different types of heat loads to be considered power dissipation, radiation and then all this now and dynamic the rate at which the total amount of power keeps increasing or decreasing. So, which is likely to be had heat load will be transferred from the cold side to the hot side where the heat sink is located. So, an object has to be cooled to some given temperature if the object to be cooled is in contact with the cold surface of the thermoelectric the desired temperature of the object can be considered as the temperature of the cold side of the pultier. To design parameters when outlining cooling application object temperature range, sink temperature range this is all a typically a Peltier TEC module maker can guarantee you from here everything else is yours. So, you need to work out saying the delta T that it can come single stage Peltier elements of capable of producing a temperature difference of 72 degrees in case there is no thermal load. If a greater difference is needed stacked modules have to be used cascaded while I am happy you know that uh, nice figure like uh, 72 and all is uh, quoted I have never seen it in real life because uh, the load is so much that uh, not easy to maintain uh, such a temperature. So, maybe 20 or 30 degrees is uh, what is more practical. If you want more, you are always cascaded like I will show 3 P n again another P another n P. So, n P n P n P and all that know they are all stacked together there you can just know what you call literally attach one to the other hot side cold side which will become the hot side of it which become the cold side of it. 2 is very common cascading 2 is very common with a little bit of you know again how do you paste them together and occasionally they are also available directly from the manufacturer. So, he gives you all those things. So, the Peltier element makes produces a temperature difference between both sides to the current flow. So, besides mechanical properties Peltier elements are defined by several important things total power handle total uh, uh, what you call voltage maximum that can withstand then the current and then also the temperature difference it can give. The more the absorbed thermal load increases the more the resultant delta T decreases. So, this is what I was talking to you about now. Q max is the amount of thermal load at I max which produces a temperature difference of practically 0. We will come back to it later. The value is defined as a maximum possible temperature difference of the element at I max when the thermal load is 0 volts which I think you know looks nice uh, more of you know mathematical or you know leading to precision. U max is the DC voltage which delivers the maximum possible delta T across the permanent uh, what you call across the element. I max is the maximum direct current which produces the maximum possible delta T. So, you see here heat pumped versus current. So, the what do you call maximum Q C minus Q maximum and as the temperature difference goes more and more now very little you know of this can be used. So, uh, both ends uh, see this is useless for us because unlikely well you know we will have such an overrated thing. Similarly, it is unlikely we have this uh, grossly underrated things also. Operating Peltier elements not at their limits in current and difference yields a greater slope and therefore more dynamic characteristics of the module. 
when outlining the system current of the Peltier element should be 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 times I max you understood no. So, something I will you know I will probably prefer at this ok these are all practical limits you understand no around 0 0.2 times the what do you call maximum power it can handle and similarly the what do you call the current no is typically about 0 0.7 to 0 0.5 or even this no the yellow cover colors and all that more likely this red is what you will see in news just a mean at the point no just a median figure. Another important criteria is the coefficient of performance when choosing a Peltier. Definition of the COP is the heat absorbed at the cold side divided by the input power of the Peltier because <coughs> when all the small systems are all attached together you have a large number of you no know, small small systems attached together overall things become very 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 poor. So, for convenience sake uh, they have uh, result of a maximum is minimum Peltier input power minimum total heat has to be rejected by the heat sink therefore, smaller heat sinks can be used what allows a more spacing device it is also important in the heat rejection of the heat sink has to be minimized. On the other hand, on optimizing cost, a design with a lower coefficient of performance has to be chosen. So, have a look at it. Okay, nicely through all the delta t's, no, they have drawn a figure which is typically seems to be a product of these things. So, once again, you see where you would like to know have the optimum power. So, once again, no, by in this case the product whether you take this or this are approximately same. So, probably 1 to this you know 0 0.3 may be a reasonable area by which you know coefficient of performance will be good. Two thermal parameters are necessary to select a Peltier element maximum cooling and temperature to example we assume an object to be cooled to 0 degrees let us say the sink temperature is 36 degrees centigrade difference is 36 there is a heat load to be absorbed 10 watts is it these are very very practical cases as we have a temperature difference of 36 k single stage Peltier element is sufficient delta t maximum we calculate delta t by delta t maximum 36 by 72 is around 0.5. So, you have seen this no typically any of these things in relation to C p obtain the optimum value of Q c by E max at the intersection of the horizontal line of delta t and delta t maximum at 0 0.5 you have seen that no somewhere here follow the blue lines and read out the value at the vertical axis. So, optimum up to 40 watts can be done obtain the maximum value of Q c max at the right vertical axis that correspond to 0.5 maximum Q c is 20 watts a Peltier element with Q max between 20 and 40 has to be chosen. Though we started with only 10 watts that needs to be dissipated you understand no something much bigger saying 20 to 40 watts has to be chosen. I will go for the higher thing only because initially if something fails we are in a problem later on fixing it is a problem. Once your experiment is succeeded and all that no maybe reducing it a little or leaving it where it is because you see while the cost is high here the size approximately will be the same they are not monstrously big or anything they are not as if they are 4 times as big they are only slightly bigger. If a pulte arrangement near to the optimum is chosen a high COP and therefore, maximum efficiency is achieved element with near the optimum will yield less cost, but less cooling capacity which is also true Peltier element will be operated near its limits which is a serious problem you have seen that no ending up with the limits is a problem. So, reason why this 40 watts I would prefer to choose is at the intersection and so on and the value plot a vertical line record the value at the intersection of the vertical line and the bottom axis if the out optimum is 0.5 using the v using the value i max of the Peltier element we can calculate the result current. Besides the thermal properties of the 
the mechanical are also important. So, having decided this, I suggest you go over this, you take the 40 watt thing and so on. So, we end up with a good starting value for these things and as I said depending on your own uh, available expertise at your area, you can always make your own electronics or try to see whether you can integrate the same uh, this control and all on your printed wiring board which you already have. If you have a wiring board probably and you already have a supply somewhere you are getting a rail which is giving you a 12 volts rail and uh, getting uh, let us say around 80 or 100 uh, watts is not impossible for you. So, you can do something to include all these things here because very rarely you know you may be giving the 12 volts into 3 or 4 amps may or may not be required actually around the operating point it will be just hunting around a small value probably around half of it. So, if you can integrate it onto your main design as a designer you have the choice of calling the shots. Now, we come to what is the size for my application do I need a special form of the Peltier what mounting options do I have the choice of the heat sink for the Peltier. So, we have this issue saying how do you what are all the Peltiers that are available and as I told you very roughly I told you that we have a 40 mm by 40 mm and so on. So, as you go down here uh, this various uh, you know controller sender are all listed here. So, I suggest you go through this a little more in detail and make sure that the things like you know who are all the fans who what are the fans you do, what are the power supply requirements you do and then test set up. So, we have here basic uh, what you call things about these are basically things relating to the controllers only you understand no because we are talking about the electronics control about it the elements the form factor and all that no right now I have no access to the internet as such it will only even if I click here nothing will happen it will just uh, what do you call uh, ok. <laughs> uh, kindly you must go back to the what you call uh, other uh, manufacturers look for the what you call Peltier controllers and so on. I will try to close this here at this point. and go back to the old uh, what you call the master book about stuff about how to deal with oh uh, I mean I am sorry we do not have it here elsewhere I uh, will try to conduct it. So, probably I will what do you call stop here at this point and see start with that you know sample we have and see what we can do here. So, thank you for this uh, session.